Boys and girls, Tony Demore here from Demore Engineering. Today we've got our E404 on the bench. And we're gonna take a look at distortion, signal to noise, things like that. But we're also gonna, in this video, a little extra at the end with the distortion. We're gonna dig in deeper because the distortion is what changes the way an amplifier sounds, the distortion profile. And we've been told again and again by our customers and others that this is the best sounding class D amp that they've ever had on their mids and highs. So we're gonna take a, a deep dive into those distortion and noise measurements and, and show you why that might be what they're saying. They also might hook up a competitor's amplifier just to compare. Let's get started. All right, so I've got this hooked up on the bench. I've got, I'm looking at channels one and two. My audio precision is a two channel piece of test equipment. So when it comes to power and things like that, I can measure bridged. We can go down to uh, two channels, measure bridge like that. Um, but right now I'm doing channels one and two. We can look at three and four as well. The, the channels are identical. I have the bottom cover off. If you haven't seen the layout of this board, you can go on our website and take a look at the gut shot. It's, um, it's a, a very symmetrical layout. All the channels are gonna have the same performance. So, but okay, channels one and two. When we do power measurements, this is another one of those devils in the details kind of thing. When we do the power measurements, I'll do them bridge so that all four channels are loaded because these four channels share a common power supply. There's one power supply in here feeding the four channels. That's how almost all four channels work. And so the cheating here is to measure the power output of one channel or two channels and then just multiply that and say, well, it's a four channel that has a total power of 500 watts. But in a lot of cases, that doesn't mean that they measured each channel to be 125 watts times four at the same time. This is especially prevalent in home audio. These home audio receivers that say, you know, nine times 100 watts, no. You put 100 watts out of all nine of those channels at one time, and it's gonna shut down, overheat, blow breaker, blow fuse, something like this. They're not rated to do that, unless it specifically says in the specifications, with all channels running or something of this manner. So that's one of those devil in the details things on power. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first test we're gonna do is the THD plus noise. That's the total harmonic distortion plus noise. These, another one of the devil in the details, this can be done at a number of different power levels with different results. I've standardized my testing so that I'm gonna test THD plus noise at half power into four ohms. So my load is set at four ohms and I have it set to generate 30 watts per channel. As you can see here, so there it's turned on. 31 watts per channel, one kilohertz, four ohm loaded and the THD plus noise. There you see it, 0 0.03, 0 0.034. Those are super good for a class D amplifier. These are like class AB amplifier kind of distortion levels. So that is awesome. And again, we're gonna dive deeper into this at the end of this video and see why this thing sounds so stinking good. All right, distortion's awesome. What else? Let's do the frequency response. Here we go. Boom, there it is. So that is really good. So if you centered this, it's plus or minus one dB from 20 to 20 K at four ohms. That's amazing. Let's try it just for fun at a two ohm low because on class D amplifiers, the frequency response does change with load impedance. So just in case you're gonna run a two ohm load on it, frequency response is gonna look like that. So two ohms, you're down four dB at 20 hertz. Again, if we centered this, it's plus and minus probably two dBs. Oh, I actually have a test that shows that right here. There it is. So plus or minus 2.3 dB from 20 to 20 kilohertz at two ohms. Let's go back and run the four ohm again. This is a function of a class D amplifier having a filter on the output. Every class D amplifier is gonna have this uh, slight variation with um, impedance change. Some worse than others. There we go. So at four ohms, we are plus or minus 1.2 dB from 2020. So again, frequency response is amazing on this amp, super flat. 
THD is amazingly low, so it's already off to a pretty amazing start. As far as SQ is concerned, let's check out the um, signal to noise ratio. The signal to noise ratio is the difference between the loudest the amp can be and how quiet the amplifier can be. Here we go, we are four ohm loaded. Signal to noise. 100.6 dB on both channels. So that is, uh, it's quiet. So that's a great result. Very quiet, very quiet when it needs to be. All right, let's check out power. But for power, like I said, I don't wanna cheat. I wanna be uh, as real as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and bridge it so that all four channels can be loaded on my two channel test system. And we'll see if we can get the 400 watts out of this that we claim that it does. Just to make sure that we're fair, we're taking these tests at 14.4. This is something the app dyno does automatically. It's very handy. So there we go, there's 14.4, actually it's four, yeah, 14.4. Did 150 watts a channel basically, so 75 by four at four ohms. And like I said, it's rated 60, so that's nice. Got over 20% margin there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and measure it into four ohm bridges. So all four channels are, are bridged down to two channels running into four ohms. So that's the equivalent of all four channels running at two ohms. Per channel, we this is the 404, so this amplifier is rated at 100 by 4. Let's run it. Two hundred and twenty nine and two hundred and twenty eight. So we're doing about one hundred and fifteen times four. So fifteen percent overrated. That's awesome. We dip down to fourteen point two six. So if I put a little more voltage on it, I'm sure we'll do over two thirty. We do that for fun. Why not? So that time we did two thirty five, two thirty four. So over a hundred and fifteen watts per channel. Into, into two ohm, all channels loaded, all channels running at the same time. We dipped down to 14.4, so that's perfect. So there you go. Okay, so now I wanna dive into the distortion characteristics of this amplifier. Why does it sound so good? It's a class D. Those can have mixed results. Some sound terrible, some sound pretty good. They all try to emulate a class A, B, or AB as, as much as they can. This one does it really well looking at signal to noise, distortion, frequency response, but it's not all about how much distortion, it's also about what is the distortion. So if the distortion was a constant two kilohertz tone that always played in the background, you would definitely hear it and it'd be obnoxious to listen to or a hum or something like that. That's something that's in the output that wasn't in the input. But distortions, if they're in the right place, can actually blend in nicely, kind of like chords on a piano or a guitar. So let's take a look at ex exactly what the distortion is. So I'm gonna put my machine in bench mode here. We're gonna bring up a FFT. That is a acronym for fast Fourier transform, and that's we're gonna break down the distortion into its component. Okay, so we'll see what the distortions are. So I have forum load. I've noticed that some people on the SQ forums like to test at five watts, so I will match their testing just for fun. Let's just put this on two channels, and we're gonna adjust our generator for five watts of output. There's 5.2, 5.3 watts, okay? We're gonna put our AES 17 filter on and that's it. Other than that, it's full bandwidth. We are going to adjust the reference on our FFT to be zero dB at the five watt output level. Okay. And there we go. So five watts out, our distortion is 0 
percent both channels so there's hardly any distortion right it's 99.98 percent the original signal coming out there's hardly any but the just the little bit distortion that's there what is it so that's our fft let's take a look here this big spike is one kilohertz that's our input signal and so it's at zero db meaning that you know like i said 99.98 percent of it is just our original signal all the rest of this stuff is the distortion and noise that's coming out besides that. You can see this amplifier has a pretty good distribution, almost an even distribution of even and odd harmonics. That is unusual. When you get way out here, 6K, 8K, you can start seeing a difference between odd and even. But having this much second order distortion is a function of tuning this amplifier in a certain way the feedback circuits and the filters that we use and that's the magic that's here I, I guarantee i put another one up here the competitors one that i have sitting here which i haven't tested yet i don't know maybe i'll be wrong but i don't think i will be we're not going to see all this even order harmonics we're going to see the odd orders up much higher so this is a deeper dive and deeper look into testing an amp and distortion of an amp and why they can actually sound a little different than each other. It's right there. All right, just as a bonus feature to this video, I've got a competitor's amplifier connected now, and I'm gonna run the same test, same filter settings, um, same everything. Same load, one kilohertz, and we're gonna do five watts out, and we're gonna look at what the distortion looks like. So there it is, 5.1, 5.2 watts per channel, 4 ohms, this is that 5 watt distortion. And you can see the distortion numbers, 003, 0024, those are just as good as our, as our amp was. I think the 024 is even maybe slightly better. But now let's look at what it is. What is that 0.03%? And back to here. Okay, so we can see our one kilohertz trace all the way up to uh, zero dB. And then you see something different with the harmonics. The second order is 20 dB below the third order. And you can see that the odds are the tall ones and the evens are the small ones. And ours was like that too a bit, but much less much less so and that would give you for some people that can hear grass grow that would give you a difference a difference in sound i guess it's not opinion it's it's fact right here it's just can you hear it or not some people maybe they can't but there you go so the even the distortion number and even if it's specced properly at like five watts or half power whatever it is even if you do all those things are still more in the details that you can dive into and that's what we see here we have a distortion number what does it mean this is a picture of it all right guys thanks for watching